in all our way. We keep on trying to look at philosophies, cliques, club, games, titles, and position, and we study going on to Hades. We, we, they leading us off a cliff, ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to get you to see something. You got to know who you are and whose you are. Ain't nothing wrong with going to church. Ain't nothing how we're having a good leader. Ain't nothing wrong with having all these things. But you got to know who you are. You, when you get out in the ocean and begin to swim, there's some stuff down there that eat you up. And you, you, you can't drink all the water. You got to have a flotational device. You got to have a refuge. Like it says in Psalms 46. When you get out in the middle of all these things, God said in Psalms 46, he said, I'm a refuge. I'm a very present help in a very present time of need. Listen to what he says over here. The woman said unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. You better believe it. And when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, hear. Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Blew her mind right at the top of her brain. Just, just dilapidated a man. And upon this, his disciples came and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said it. What do you seek it thou? That they didn't dare ask Jesus anything. What seek it thou? What does she want, Jesus? Why does she talk to thou? So why are you talking to her? He, he, he didn't say nothing to her. But I know we got to get out of here. You know, we got to get out of here. I, I'll finish this up next, next week. Because it talks about the water pots and all these different things and how the woman became a great evangelist and how she really needed to understand that sometimes when God calls you to do powerful work, you got to get all the gook up out of your life. You, you got to quit worrying about somebody else. And you got to get yourself together because you, you got somewhere to go. The Bible says, declares that we as men, man and woman, God, we, 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 we got to be, we got to really go out and we got to look unbrightly the word of God. Spread the gospel without holes. Well, I mean, I ain't talking about like holes, like like holes and clothes. I mean, I mean we, got, we can't put no holes on it. We got to let it go free. And we got to have it go in power. Come on, woman of God. Okay, listen, look, look at this. Look at this. She's drinking a little water right now. But well, we got to get out of here. Look what it says over here. We're, 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 we're at the end of this. But look, Pastor Ellis come to bring you information through the illumination. I, look, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of fancy words. I'm not going to talk a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I'm not going to be shooting you with a bunch of inspiration. I'm trying to give you cold, hard, biblical facts. Not going to the whole lot of this stuff, dealing with the, the this, this amplifier version. That's fine, then and good. But when you understand that the word of God, God speaks something very strong, he talks about the spirit. God is a spirit. The, 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 God is a spirit. This is one of the reasons you see how we need to worship God in the spirit, in the truth. God is the spirit, the first, greatest, and most uh, solemn and necessary truth in compassion of nature is that God causes all things. This is what he's saying. All things to be unperfection. All these different things you see that's going around there, it's God that entangles all this. All this stuff that leads us into eternity and power is all through the heavenly word. It's not through any kind of philosophies. It, the Paul said, don't get carried away by all this wind doctrine. There's an area of the Bible that talks about, when I was reading some of the Adam Clark breakdowns, it said the second reason why we should worship him in spirit and truth is by the uh, uh, spirit and truth. Uh, this is meant by what the body, uh, that uh, 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 the mortal, uh, the body, or the, mor the mortal, or the compass of the parts of the body. And as he begins, I'm trying to just really kind of thumb through this a little bit. And then I want you to say, the reason we should worship him in spirit and truth. By this is meant that God is without a body part. This is what one of the Albert Burns nobles was saying. It, it, it's not physical. What is he saying? It ain't a man. It's, it's a spirit. And that it is not material. It's not mortal. It's not composed of parts. You know, it's not something that you see. So when Moses went up on the mountain, he, he just saw the power of the power of God, just the unburning bush, the, the unconsumable bush. You know, the first truth of religion is going to understand that we got to come submissive to the things that are unseen. That God says that according to the word of God, that if we're going to worship, we got to worship in the spirit of truth. But okay, well, I can't see it, but I got to believe it. Faith coming by hearing, hearing come by the word of God. We got to believe that what we see unseen has got the power to come seen. Through the manifestation of the power of God. But we, we got to believe that. And we got to have enough spiritual understanding to say that when we come to worship God, we must be pure and holy. God is looking for God look for holiness. And it's what we in. Come on, woman of God. 
Amen. That's that's so powerful what you were talking about earlier. Well, just the whole scripture is so powerful. And that, but you know, God continues just to, to watch over us and knows who, who we are. So it's like on the woman of the well, she, he knew exactly who she was and what she needed. And sometimes we just need that have, having spoken to us so we can get back into to God and to get back and, and be focused on where God is taking us to. But we thank you all for joining us today. We thank you all for just continuing just to, to plug into the, the word of God. It's such powerful words that are coming forth and so much wisdom in this word. So much wisdom in, in what we've been dis- discussing here today. And we just want you to, to just be encouraged to take this word, reflect on it. What is God telling you? What is God showing you in your life? You know that we are vessels of God and we're called to do a work for him. Continue just to, to gain the wisdom. Continue to be in the word of God so we can all come together and fulfill the work that he has for us. Amen. Amen. As I said, it's always a blessing for you guys to be with us. I, I tried to, I tried to, I tried to get it. I tried to kind of cut it, but it's, it, it, looked like it was two segments in one, but we're going to get back into this again on next week. And we're going to work about, and we're going to hear what the word of God has to say. But it's like I say, it's a pleasure for you guys to join us. Don't forget on Monday, we got our 1030 broadcast. It's a pre-broadcast. And then we got Tuesday night testimony. For those who want to know all the information about the ministry, look, go to the website. Go to the website, harvestnewlightchurch.com. It's usually updated uh, by this time today, and you catch everything during the course of the week. But it's always a pleasure for you guys to be able to see at Harvest New Light Church. And to, to each and every one of you, look, we love you. We care about you. Look, keep, keep your antennas up. Keep your antennas up. Don't, don't believe everything you hear. Read it. Find it out for yourself. See what's going on. God bless.